good news. I have discovered yet another way for how to have a dress. Join me and let's do it again. What we've got here is the dress has been pinned up on the customer, which means we usually flip it to the outside. That's why you can see the pins and the inside of the hem. So we're looking at the correct side of the dress here. I am going to come to my side seam. That's my favorite place to take the measurement. And I'm gonna measure the amount that this dress needs to be turned up. That is gonna be, it looks like an inch and a quarter. Okay, a little bit of math as always. If it's pinned up an inch and a quarter, we need to remove less than that so that we have hem allowance. So I'm gonna turn this edge a quarter and a quarter, maybe even less, maybe more like an eighth and a quarter. So I am only going to add, I'm not gonna add a full half inch to that and only cut off an inch and a quarter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut off an inch and a half. Just leave ourselves a quarter to do that little, that little tiny turn. Perfect. So what I'm gonna do next is take out all of my pins. I've established that I'm gonna shorten this dress a total inch and three quarters, but I'm only gonna remove an inch and a half. That way I have a little bit of room to turn. Let's go all the way around and do this. And then we're gonna flip this hem to the inside. Cause again, it's pinned up to the outside right now. Perfect. And we are not gonna worry about the lining right now. So I'm gonna throw that inside of the dress. Okay. Now we've established that I'm removing an inch and a half. So I'm gonna mark it all the way around. I'm literally measuring an inch and a half up from the edge, the finished edge. And I'm gonna make these marks all the way around. Do, 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 as fast as I can. So this is a typical bridesmaid's dress. Insert various color here of poly chiffon with probably a little bit of a wide skirt and some variation of a flattering top with straps. Okay, uh, we're seeing a lot of these right now because you know, fall weddings coming up. Everyone loves a fall wedding in Oklahoma. They are the best because it's finally starting to cool off. So like an October wedding in Oklahoma, prime time. It's like March in the, uh, March or April in the Northeast. Okay, we're almost there. How many things can I babble about? This would have made a good live one because you can ask me things while I'm doing this. It's nice and almost mindless. That's an interesting point, actually. I wanna know if you're interested in live. I haven't done it because I think it's kind of, I don't know. I don't know if I would watch it. That's the thing. I have trouble doing things that I wouldn't watch. So let me know. Okay, moving on. You have a choice here. Again, my pin aversion will show here, but you can now go back through and fold up at your chalk line all the way around the dress, but I mark it all the way around so that I don't have to do that. I am straight up gonna take this puppy over to the sewing machine and with just these marks, nothing cut and nothing pinned, I'm ready to go. This is gonna be an exciting one. I hope you like this one. I hope this like, you know, fulfills some, some something that you wanted to do, but maybe you have been fearful of or just didn't want to. Okay. All right, you see that little baby? That's a little chalk mark that we made over there, okay? So what I'm gonna do now, I'm looking at the inside of the garment. You can tell because you can see some of the surging from the side seam. I'm at one of the side seams and I'm gonna now fold up the edge at my chalk mark. Now, I am aiming to put a stitch line about an eighth of an inch from my fold. And I'm gonna hold, based on my chalk, the folded over amount of the hem allowance 
like this as I feed it through all the way around. Reminder, we still have not cut anything. That is part of this technique, so pretty cool. All right, an eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna be gentle as I'm feeding it in. I don't wanna stretch it. And I really wanna guide this in so that I'm holding up the same amount of hem allowance like I marked out, an inch and a half all the way around. Oops, lift that up, get that out of there, good. We're just like really, really close to the edge. You don't have to have, um, you, you can have a, a medium kind of stitch width here. I'm sorry, stitch length, 2.5, maybe three. But boy, I'm just like really riding the edge there. And most dresses are gonna be slightly curved at the bottom. So just keep that in mind. You're not gonna be able to run the stitch for very long without stopping to readjust as I am here. And this is it, you're looking at it. We're just gonna run this all the way around exactly like this. Hard to believe. And you know, when I first learned this, I really thought, no, there's no way this is gonna work. It doesn't really even make sense to me. Um, I just wasn't, I wasn't a fan, but I have some very, very talented women that I am very blessed to be able to work with and have some strong opinions about this and their strong opinions differ from mine. And so I decided we're gonna give this another try because they are so much smarter than me and there is no way that they are wrong about this. So that's how the resurgence of this narrow rolled technique came about. Look at that. Oh, this is gonna be good. This is gonna be good. Now, uh, one thing that we have to keep in mind that is an assumption in this case is we cannot, I don't believe it works to hem the dress unevenly as well this way. It, it, it can be a little difficult, but you know what? That's not true. I take it back. I immediately take it back as soon as I say it. You can certainly, un, you can certainly hem a dress that is uneven this way. You're just gonna definitely use the pins. Don't, don't use just the chalk, the chalk only process is definitely for a, we are removing an equal amount all the way around the dress in this case. But I find that when I'm doing an uneven hem, the sides are longer for some reason, maybe a manufacturing issue, maybe a, a, a human uh, trait, doesn't matter what or why, I will pin this all up and even press it in place. And then, you know, sometimes I'll even have the customer come in while it's pinned and pressed with this not cut pinned up and make him put it on one more time before I cut it. Kind of gives me a little bit of um, security, a little bit of like bumper lanes. If I'm feeling unsure about a dress for some reason, maybe it's got some kind of wacky production issue that I have been noticing that, so. Almost there. Just kidding, I have no idea how close we are. Oh, we are close. Look at that. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> oh, I gotta let it, I, I gotta stop. So look at that. Ooh, that's weird. That doesn't make any sense. You have all of this extra hem allowance. It just topples down. This is dumb. I know, we're not done yet. Come on over to this table. Alrighty, now for the important part. I've got a couple pairs of scissors here. This is sort of a preference thing. Um, so I'm gonna show you both. Now it's time to cut. And what we're gonna do is, do you see this puckered seam? That's the one I just put in. That's the one you just watched me put in. I sewed it like that. Now I'm opening it and now it's time to cut that guy off. Cause we're gonna cut it off and then we're gonna roll it one more time. And it's going to be not just beautiful, but microscopic in a way that the double turn just doesn't quite get it. Doesn't quite get it because after a while your hands get tired too and you get that really like Ugh, carpal tunnel-y feeling. This is much better for that. I love that. All right, um, I'm gonna make the first cut with my scissors here, my standard shears, but I'm gonna show you these because this can really be helpful. The duckbill is sometimes a preference for people because it can, it, it sort of can help you sometimes push, 
push fabric out of the way so that you don't clip what's underneath of it because it's got this paddle here, you see. And so you're cutting as close as you can to that edge without interrupting the stitching, very important. And I, I find that sometimes having that like, yeah, that wide paddle to lean that fabric against can be very helpful. Now, I will tell you, even if you do accidentally trim through the stitching, you can just roll it in. Because remember, we are rolling this up again, so it's not a big deal. This is also why I had you leave so little hem allowance, just that quarter inch, even though we were doing a double turn. Because seriously, look at how small that is. We're down to a quarter inch. We're trimming as close as we can. It's not remotely close to a quarter inch as it is with this single turn. So by the time we do the second turn, we're golden. We're going to be perfect. Now I'm just going to go all the way around, cutting and cutting and cutting. This, again, teensy bit te tedious, but you know what? You were going to have to cut it anyway. And this is the part that really made me think that uh, there is no way that that is efficient. There's no way that that's going to be right. But I have found that the accuracy with this technique has been awesome, especially when I'm doing really wildly difficult fabrics like these poly chiffon bridesmaids dresses. They are not the easiest to work with if you've worked with them before. They don't always go where you want them to go. But the same can be true of beautiful, expensive silk. The silk bias cut silk, whew, don't even get me started. It's gonna slip all over the place. This has a lot of, um, this gives you more dexterity. It gives you more control over the movement of the fabric, the evenness of the seam, the evenness of the turn up. There is a lot about this process that improves, in my opinion, the potential for really like great accuracy and I like that a lot about it. I also like, I do like holding it up in front of me to kind of see it, the gravity helps the under layers, the other fabric fall away from it so that you've only got the layer you wanna cut falling on the paddle of that um, scissor. There is no reason that you can't use literally any scissor that you want for this. I just like this one, it's comfortable, I like it. Oh, it's called a duck bill. I guess it's supposed to look like a little ducky. I'll put that in the notes. I really like the duck bill. I use it for a lot of things. Um, anytime that I'm cutting individual layers of fabric that are attached to other layers of fabric, that's when I'm gonna get out the duck bill. There we go, all set, all done. So this little baby is what we would have normally cut off in the beginning if you, you know, are going that way. But this way, we're done with this now. We can save it if we need it, I don't know why. Now we are left with this little beauty. It almost looks done, but it's not because it's gonna fray. So we do need to turn it up that one more time, but look at how great it already looks. Ooh, love it. Now we're gonna turn this little guy just like an eighth of an inch over, Boop, just like that. And we're gonna throw that on the machine, stitch him down, and then we'll be done. All right, come on over. I'm gonna start on a seam like I always do. I just really like starting on a seam just in case my back stitch is ugly or anything like that. Um, and I'm using, I'm just using my hands to turn it. Ooh, oh, whoopsies. Okay. Automatic machine, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Get over that little hump. And then yeah, that's all I'm doing. I'm just rolling. Rolling and sewing, rolling and sewing, and we're just turning that little bad boy over. Ooh, it's so cute. Uh, your big your big goal right here is to use both hands to smooth and flip. Keep everything as smooth as possible. Try not to stretch it, trying not to distort it, and also trying to keep that roll very, very narrow. So if you get the edge of the fabric, turning up inside of your foot, which will happen because this, this roll is so narrow, that's okay. Just lift your foot, reposition. Ooh, do you see that? You see how it rolled up in? That's okay. I'm just gonna lift my foot and get that edge back under again. 
With this stretchier fabric, I'm probably gonna run into that issue a bunch, but that is just okay. Higher um, natural fiber content, you'll have less of that issue. With the poly, we'll have a little bit more. But you see how that's looking on the other edge? Ooh, tight, clean, beautiful. We're still gonna press it afterwards, but I'm liking it. The other thing you might wanna do here is put a nice new sharp needle in the machine. We're really doing a fine stitch here on a fine fabric. And so that can really help if you find that you feel like it's crumpling up or getting caught. It may just be that you need a smoother, cleaner entrance um, and exit, like needle penetration into the fabric. Why do I say these things? Why do I do it? Because it's the right word, that's why. Because I am a grammatically correct person. And I am teaching. I'm a professional. Last step already. So we're gonna iron this just to kind of scooch out some of our little um, wiggles from running it under the machine. Uh, the amount of, ooh, that looks beautiful. The amount of little waves will just be dependent on the type of fabric. But like I said, I think that this is a great procedure for any type of chiffon-like material. So chiffon being, let's loosely call it semi-sheer. So bridesmaids dresses, um, anything that's kind of floaty. This is a really great way to have a lot of control over the amount that you turn up, the amount that you cut, so ultimately the amount that you shorten, and the overall cleanliness of the stitch itself. I mean, look at how beautiful that is. It is just tiny and gorgeous. It's smaller than the one that came from the factory. I'm so impressed by it. The, the more that I do it, the more that I like it. The, the cutting step, the cutting part way through, I don't know why that was a hard one for me. I think because we all get into ruts and we believe that our way is the right way, but definitely not so. And no, no more true than in the thing that we love to do, right? So I am no more wrong in sewing than in anything else. But I really like how this turned out. So you do them, you compare them, cut first or cut halfway through, do the double roll all at once, do single roll, single roll, two lines of stitching. I know, two lines of stitching. Seems superfluous. And yet, I want you to test it and do this and compare it to the other way that you usually do it. And tell me which one actually took longer. Because I'll bet you in the end, like me, they'll have ended up taking the same amount of time. But this one's prettier. I like this one better. A little bit of practice, a little bit of tools to make it nice, to make it clean, to make it yours. Um, it's perfect. So thank you for joining me for this one. Again, we have a couple of other hemming types of videos. We got sequin hems, we got a lettuce hem, we've got um, a heavier silky material with a train that we've done. So take a look at all of those videos and Questions, comments, concerns, like, subscribe, all the things, all the words. Thank you so much. See you next time.